Hey, Jason from Theme Punch here. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the Slider Revolution 6.0 responsive settings. So to get started, toward the top here, if you just visit Globals, and then toward the bottom we have Default Desktop Content Width, Default Notebook Content Width, Tablet Width, and Mobile Width. And these are basically similar to CSS media queries where we can decide how content will be displayed depending on the size of the window. So for example, if you can imagine viewing a website on your desktop computer, that would be our default desktop view. And then if you were to resize the window down, once it reached 1024 pixels, then our notebook design view would kick in. And the same goes for tablet and mobile. So if you were to view the website on a mobile device, if that mobile device had a screen size of 480 or lower, then we would be presented with the mobile view of our module. So before you get started creating your own modules, just review these numbers and make sure that they're in line with how you want your sliders to appear best. So let's go ahead and create a new module. Okay, so now inside my new module, toward the top here, I have my different device view options. They're disabled by default for new modules, but you can enable them for each one. And then once enabled, you can switch between them and set up your content for each view. So on the editing stage, these dotted lines here represent your editing area for that view. And the size of these areas is determined inside the layout section here. So if I scroll down, we have layer area size, and this is my desktop size, notebook, tablet, and mobile. So the numbers on the left are the same as in my global settings, and really it's best to just let those be the same. But then I can adjust the heights for each of these as well. So for example, for the mobile view, instead of 720, maybe I want that to be 640. And you can see that my screen just resized here to give me the 480 by 640 view. So now let's go ahead and add some content, and then we'll explore this layers grid area a bit more. I'm going to head back to the desktop view and I'm going to add a background image here to the slide. And now I'm going to add a shape layer and we can position that to the top left of our layers grid area with a size preset of cover. And if we add some text, quick style headline, I'm going to choose Poppins. And now let's save this and see how it would look on the front end of our website. So I'm just going to add a Gutenberg block here under Theme Punch. This is my module. And now because this is a full width slider, it spans across the entire width of the web page, but you can see our content is confined into our layers grid area. If I went back to the slider and, for example, I wanted to change maybe the width here from 1240 to 800, save that. Now you can see our layers grid area here is going to change. So this is really what that's useful for. So next I'm going to go back and undo those changes. And I'm going to align the layers to the entire slide as opposed to the layers grid area. So for example, right here, it's toward the middle, but maybe I want this layer in this shape to be aligned to the very left of the screen. So I can do that by just selecting the layer, and under size and position, I change layer align to scene. So I can do that for the text as well. Scene, save it, and here we go. Now our layers are aligned to the left side. So this makes it really convenient to set up your content depending on maybe you want it aligned to the entire slide, maybe you want some other content aligned to your layers grid area. It's really up to you. So now let's explore setting up our content for the different device views. So I'm going to head back to the editor here and I'm going to go ahead and select the notebook view and then for this layer I'm going to center it. I'm going to change its color. How about we make it yellow? And then I'm also going to bump up the text size and the line height. And this little pop-up here just gives you a mental picture of what the other values are for the other different device views. 
So now let's save that, head back to our slider and reload the page. And now I'm going to right click, choose inspect, and using Chrome inside this toggle device toolbar option here, I can resize the window. And our notebook was set up to change at 1024 pixels. So as we hit that mark, we should see our content change. There you go. So now it's perfectly set up how we want it to look whenever the screen size is 1024 pixels or smaller. And then we can do the same for the other device view. So I can head back here. I can choose tablet. And then for this, maybe I want to align that layer to the bottom. So I'll go ahead and do that. And as an offset, maybe we give it 20 pixels. And then for the mobile view, maybe I don't want this layer to appear at all on the mobile view because as I get down to this screen size, maybe there's only so much content that can fit. So what I can do for here is I can head into the responsive settings and then under visibility, I can uncheck the mobile device there. And now if we save this and then head back to our web page, reload it. So now we've got the desktop view. We've got our notebook view. As we go down smaller, you can see that the layer is aligned to the bottom now for our tablet view. And then as we go down smaller, it completely disappears for the mobile view. So this is just a really convenient way of determining how things look and if they even appear at all, depending on the screen size. So let's head back to the editor and explore some more responsive settings. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that layer for the mobile view again. And then I'm going to head back to the desktop view. And so for this layer, we have intelligent inheriting on. And just to show you how this works, I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer and we can just re-add it. And intelligent inheriting is enabled by default. And what this does is as I switch between devices, it's just automatically going to resize at the same rate as my layer's grid area resizes. So this is just really convenient to give you a good starting point for resizing as you set up your content. But if I didn't want that to happen, I can head back to desktop here and I can disable this option. And then I can choose reset all values from desktop. And then as I switch between the device views, you can see that the layer is not resizing. So it really just depends on how you want to design inside the editor. Sometimes intelligent inheriting will be very convenient, or sometimes you don't want your text to be resized and you want to resize it manually yourself. So just to revert that change, I can enable the option again, choose inherit all values from desktop. And now you can see again, as I switch between the devices, it's resizing again. So for the other responsive behavior settings here, if I never wanted the layer to resize between devices, I could disable this option. For responsive offsets, the way this works is if I were to head back to desktop view and then just check out the size and position, we can see right here it has a 50 pixel offset for the top and left. And this is right here, 50 pixels. So as we resize between devices and our layers grid area changes, as that scales, the offset will also scale in the same proportion. So the offset for this device view here is only 19. So I could go ahead and disable that option and then the layer would maintain the same position 50 pixels between devices. For the responsive children option, this is if your content had any custom HTML. So for example, if we head into content here, I could maybe have a WordPress form or some other type of HTML in here. And with this option enabled, as my layer resizes, it will also attempt to resize the HTML inside the layer's content. So next is visibility. We discussed that a little bit before. The hide under width option can be used if you have this set up for your slider, and that's over in the slider settings. General, if you scroll down, hide under browser width. What you can do is you can say, okay, I wanna hide the entire slider under a certain width. 
I want to hide only marked layers or I want to hide all layers. So for example, if I entered 800 pixels here for marked layers and then for the layer under responsive settings, if I enabled this, then this layer would always hide when the screen width was 800 pixels or lower. And then the option show if mouse over slider would be useful if I had enabled hide under width or if I had disabled one of the visibility settings here. And then the layer would just show when I hovered my mouse over the slider. So let's explore some of the responsive settings for the slider itself. I'm going to head over to slider settings, layout, and then under advanced settings. I have a few options here for max width and max height. And then keep breakpoint heights and respect ratio are very useful for deciding how your slider itself should resize. So to best demonstrate that, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the desktop view here and then disable the breakpoints. And then I'm going to change the height for the desktop view in the layer area size to 500 pixels. Save that and reload the page on the front end. Here we have a full width slider with a layers grid height of 500 pixels. I'm going to inspect and choose toggle device bar and let's just reduce the width here and see what happens to the slider's height as it changes. So as you can see the more we reduce the width the height also reduces. So this may be what you want for your slider but maybe you want it to resize a little bit differently. So let's explore those options. So first we have keep breakpoint heights. So let's enable that and then see what the behavior is here. So keep breakpoint heights is going to tell the slider, okay, as you reduce the width, never ever reduce the heights. So you can see as I'm changing here, the height always stays the same. So next I'm going to show you the respect ratio option and I'm just going to go ahead and disable this and then head back to the front page here. So as you can see, our slider has expanded full width, but the height remains at a maximum height of 500 pixels. And this is the default for the slider. So right here, we have our 500 pixels set here. So our slider's height is never going to grow beyond that number unless we enable the respect ratio option right here. So if I do that and then save the slider and reload it on the front end, you can see that the slider's height has now expanded at the same proportion that the width has expanded according to these numbers right here. And then a good demonstration of this is if I change the width and height to a one by one ratio. So let's save that, head back to the front end. And now the slider's width and height are both identical. So you can see my slider actually expands beyond the fold here if I scroll down. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is the visibility options for the navigation. So if we head up here and click the navigation tab, if we were to enable arrows, bullets, tabs, they all have these same options. So if you scroll down to visibility, what we can do is we can say maybe we want to show them only at a certain screen width or maybe we want to hide them at a certain screen width. And what's really useful about this is it allows you to have different navigations for different screen sizes. So for example, maybe I want thumbnails for my desktop view, but maybe I want to hide those on the mobile view because they just don't fit. So for the mobile view, maybe I'll only show arrows. So as an example for the thumbnails here, what I could do is I could say hide under 640 pixels. And then for the arrows, I could say hide over 640 pixels. And this essentially allows me to have two different navigation setups depending on the screen size. So that covers the responsive settings for Slider Revolution 6.0. And thanks for watching.